Hi everyone, this is David Wicks, your instructor for EDTC 6536, Instructional Technology and Information Management. And in this screencast, we want to look at the syllabus for our course and make sure that you're um, understanding uh, the different assessments that I'm asking you to complete uh, during our time together. So you'll find the syllabus under Course Information and there you'll see both the syllabus and the schedule document and they work together. And if you clicked on the syllabus, you would open a document like this uh, that would show you uh, the syllabus in a PDF format. Uh, there, once you've got it, have it open, uh, you'll see my contact information and I want to assure you that I, I will work with you however uh, best suits you. Um, you can see that I have my phone number and my uh, email address listed there, uh, as well as my blog that you can go to and, and uh, uh, read and uh, watch some of the things that I'm uh, thinking about uh, um, when I'm looking at instructional technology issues. Uh, you can also see my Twitter feed there as a place where uh, you could see um, uh, different resources that I'm finding uh, that help me better understand how teachers are using technology in their instruction. Uh, in terms of how you should contact me or what's the best way, uh, if your question that you have could benefit others in the class, so let's say it's something like you're not finding a link um, uh, that I've told you to look for to uh, click on for information and you don't see it listed anywhere. Uh, if you don't see it listed anywhere, there's probably uh, one or more people that are having this same issue. So a question like that posted uh, in the questions forum, just quickly um, clicking on discussions and then you'd see the questions uh, forum. Uh, that will help um, others uh, know that you also have the same question and then any response I give or others give, um, we can get to the bottom of that more quickly. Uh, on the other hand, if it's a, of more personal nature, maybe there's just something um, that you don't agree with in terms of maybe the way that I graded something, or um, we're a little ways into the course and there's something that that's making you uncomfortable um, or that you that you don't understand and, and you really think it's just applying to you, then I'm happy to visit with you by phone, um, by email, uh, in person. Uh, we can schedule a time for, you, for us to meet and we can work through um, anything like that. So uh, with that said, we're using Blackboard 9.1 in our course, which is the new version of Blackboard that the whole university will switch to um, in the, this, the fall. Uh, we, uh, in my courses, typically pilot new versions of, of software uh, to see if they will work for other uh, professors. So I appreciate any feedback you can give me. Uh, for the most part, it should look the same to you. Uh, most of the changes in 9.1 are on the uh, instructor side. Uh, in terms of this course description, um, we're wanting to look at uh, current and emerging uses of, of uh, technology and education and our emphasis is on teaching, learning, and managing uh, information. And so we'll have some hands-on um, uh, tools that we'll, we'll explore as well as um, talk about how technology uh, might impact any school reform. Uh, we're focusing uh, in on two ISTE standards. Um, ISTE uh, is an organization that, it's an international organization uh, for the use of um, instructional technology um, or technology and education in general, uh, but it, uh, it has developed national education standards that uh, many states, including Washington, have adopted. And so we're going to be looking at two in this course and their standards two and three. Um, and so we'll we'll get into those more uh, in detail. But but basically uh, we want to 
better understand how we design and develop learning resources and assessments for our students that um, are digitally based. And then we want to also understand better how we as uh, teachers uh, can model work and learning in these digital environments. Uh, you can see the goals there. Uh, they're basically restatements of what we've just discussed, uh, as well as you're going to, to uh, design a, a technology-enhanced learning activity. In terms of the technology used in this course, uh, there's a link here. Uh, it's, it's important that you take a look at that, especially if, for whatever reason, um, you feel like uh, Blackboard um, or other technologies we use aren't working very well for you. They're slow. Uh, you get error messages. Uh, please take a look at that and uh, make sure that you're using the recommended technologies. You can see our course uh, content here, and basically it, it revolves around um, uh, both uh, the standards that we're looking at um, as well as the, the text that we'll, we'll be um, using, and we'll talk more about the text in a little bit as well. Let's take a look at the activities that uh, you will be working on during the course, and these are assessments that you'll complete. These are things that you'll be graded on, and the first of these is the resource sharing activities. So there are 10, of, um, there are ten points each, and there are eight of them, so each week you will share a resource, and in sharing a resource, um, you will be uh, doing this after you've done the assigned readings. Uh, so hopefully you'll, as you're going through the reading, there will be something that you'll be interested in, you'll want to explore further, and so you'll either go to the library databases for the university, or you'll go to uh, other websites and find more information to share with us uh, about this topic that you've um, picked. And um, you are going to then um, summarize that. So I'm encouraging you to use something like Microsoft Word so that you can uh, do all your form or do all your editing, spell checking, and have it all uh, ready to go so that you can just copy and paste it into our course blog. And there's a link on the left side of the menu that says Course Blog. You'll click on that, and you'll be able to create a new entry. Um, so if uh, I go to that just real quickly, you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the Course Blog. You'll click on that, and you would just click View to go into it. And we already have... Um, uh, at least one uh, in here. Yeah, we just have one. And this is a good one. I, I appreciate uh, Tanya um, uh, being uh, jumping on here and being the first one to do this because it gives us a, a really good example. I know she was interested in um, RSS, or Real Simple Syndication, and um, saying she didn't understand it and wanted more information about it. So this is a perfect example of where you can not only help yourself, but help others. So she went out and found um, this, this article. One of the things when you post this, and I can see uh, she, she's, she's going to want to come back and edit this, but the link that you provide uh, needs to be one that other people can click on and go immediately to the content. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you test that, make sure that that works. But she's done a great job here of just providing us a short summary of the article, which is, is something that we've, we're asking you to do. Let's talk about how you would add your own document. You've, you've clicked on Course Blog, you've viewed it, you see other entries here. And now if you click Add New Entry, uh, it'll pop up with a date here. Here I would prefer that you actually give us a title. So, um, you know, in, in the a case of Tanya, maybe um, she would put in something like more about RSS feeds and click Continue. Okay, and that takes her uh, or you to where you can compose. And then if you'll click on um, this paste from Word, if you've already copied 
you've gone into your Word document, you've composed, and now you uh, just select the text, copy it, and now come here, paste from Word. It will let you paste right into this box, and then you can insert it. And by doing this, you lose some of the formatting that Word applies that can sometimes um, cause problems with uh, if, when Word uh, text is posted or pasted into uh, web-based documents. Uh, you could just compose in, in this window. Uh, I'm suggesting that you use Word because it's probably an environment you're, you're more used to composing in. But typing in here works. Um, you do want to include a link that someone can click on. So if uh, I was sharing a resource um, that was just SPU's website, okay, by typing it in this way, and then if I would submit this, it's not uh, a clickable link that other people can use. So if I select it, and then up here, if you see the little link icon, click there. Now you can actually enter the uh, URL uh, in that window. Um, you could also choose to tell it to open in a new window. That would give them the ability to uh, continue to be in the blog, but just have the resource pop up in another window that they could review, close, and still be in the blog. Uh, click Insert there. And now this is a clickable link for us. Uh, so let's say that I finished. And so I'm going to go down to the bottom here and save and exit. When I do that, I get to this particular point, and uh, now uh, I should still test this, okay? I should still test, click on that link, and you can see in, in Firefox it opens in a new tab. Uh, but if I close that now, um, I'm right back to where I was, and I could go to the next um, one on the list. Okay. You also have the ability to comment on other people's. I'm not saying you have to comment in these. When you're actually reviewing them, you're just going to scroll through the list and um, quickly scan the topics and see if something catches your eye. If it does, you'll, you'll read it um, and maybe uh, add it to something that you do later in terms of a reflection or part of a project. You can, if you want to, uh, choose to comment on other people. So if you click view comments, um, it'll pop up and you can simply add a comment in the same way that you added the post. If you put something like great resource and then give them some feedback, you could post that. And now we can see there's one comment associated with this uh, particular post and uh, we could go from there. So that should give you just a basic idea of how that uh, piece should work. As I say, you can uh, post, you can uh, comment on other students' posts, but that's not a requirement. What is required is that you scan through everyone's uh, work and anything that you find valuable, then you explore further. Uh, so here's quickly the rubric. So it was on topic, so you related it to the to the module. So somewhere in your post, you should tell us why this is related to the, the topic that we're currently on. You've provided some kind of information that extends uh, or contrasts with what's been presented in the module. So there was an article on, an R, on RSS feeds, and Tanya extended it. She gave us more information about it. Now, if uh, maybe in reading what was there about RSS feeds, and maybe it, the article was describing how great they are and how every educator should be using RSS feeds for everything they do, maybe she was aware of an article, or when she did her search, she found one that said, uh, you know, RSS feeds are dead, that's a dying technology, and, and they're hard to use and don't serve much purpose. Uh, it would be good for us to, to see the other side, so that would be a good article to share as well. And then uh, provide a, a concise summary. I, I think a paragraph is plenty in this case, and uh, then uh, you want to make sure you provide a working link. So Tanya's going to want to go back um, and, and, and make sure her link works. And if you 
uh, read somebody's who it doesn't work for them uh, and encourage them to, to correct it that's that's worth two points and then finally that you've posted by the deadline so if you go to the course schedule you'll see the deadline for um, when these should be posted make sure you have yours uh, posted by that date now when we're just getting started here uh, we've had a few uh, bumps in the road uh, I, I don't think we need to apply the deadlines for this first module, but definitely for the second uh, week and, and thereon, this is something that when you do this self-assessment, and that's how this is graded, uh, there's actually a, a um, link in course uh, in the uh, modules where you uh, could self-assess yourself on these, you know, basically answer, answering five yes no questions uh, that are giving you your grade okay all right then in terms of the online uh, discussion this is where we're using talk wheel and um, you'll want to make sure that you um, are that you've reviewed the the rubric for the good what a good discussion looks like uh, discussion post looks like uh, before you um, finish that module so that you make sure you meet the criteria. Uh, so make sure you've reviewed the deadlines for posting. Basically it's a first post by by Thursday and wrap up the discussion by Sunday. So between Thursday and Sunday is when it needs to take place. You can post a little early if you want. Posting late does not work. Um, if you start sharing things about the last module uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the next one, uh, people have already moved on, um, and so you won't uh, be actually participating in the discussion. So not only do you lose out on any feedback if 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 this happens to you, but the rest of us lose out on uh, hearing your great ideas. So please uh, work hard on that. Um, if for some reason you've got a uh, be out of town or something. Uh, just check in with me and we'll, we see what we can do to work something out. Uh, so here's the criteria. You'll take, a again, a self-assessment after you're finished to uh, evaluate yourself on this. But just quickly, um, you want to make sure that you contribute at least one post demonstrating your familiarity with the content of the assigned reading. So the best way to do this is to just cite something um, that's in the reading and you reference an article uh, that was uh, that we discussed and and just give us a, a, a quick take on what was what was said there and make it clear um, it doesn't have to be exact APA format but but make sure it's clear we know where uh, that idea came from uh, the second is to contribute at least one post related to content of the module that's from some kind of an outside resource. So this is where you could actually tie this um, in with your resource sharing. So if you, um, again, uh, sorry to keep using Tanya as a resource, but if you've uh, had a question about RSS feeds and uh, so you've read and you found a resource on them, so not only are you able to reference your resource uh, in your resource sharing but also then in the discussion you might say as I read that article that was outside reading um, here was something that stood out to me and that would be valuable and um, by the way don't think of each of these criteria each criterion as uh, a separate post um, you could just have several posts but you don't want the posts to be long you want them to stay about a paragraph uh, long so people don't uh, aren't, or if we were looking around the classroom and I was asking for discussion um, you wouldn't stand up and uh, give an essay as your response you would talk for uh, a minute or two and basically address one topic and that's what we're asking you to do in the discussion oh and by the way here's the the, the full credit for the second one is uh, you could you could use real world examples so you could use something from your own teaching uh, this is something that happened to me or um, here's a real world situation that I know of where this technology is being used or the other readings outside the course um, that's those are both good ways to address that um, the third one is you've extended or um, 
contrasted somebody else's ideas. So here's a place where this criterion could be met in another post, in, in a post where you're addressing another, uh, like one number one or number two, uh, because if you uh, respond to someone who has maybe um, commented about a technology, let's say smart boards, and they're uh, talking about how great they are and how every uh, teacher should have one, and then you maybe come back and say, I read an article or uh, in this school situation, this was a, a particular here. Professional de development was a challenge with smart boards, and we didn't have anybody to show us how to use them, and therefore we didn't uh, maximize their potential. You could also extend their idea, so they tell us a good um, something positive about a, a technology and how it's being used in the classroom, and you know of another reason why that's a good technology. Okay, and number four is meeting the deadlines. I've already gone through this, so I won't I won't uh, beat that anymore. Uh, and number five, uh, you read all the the posts. So, in this way, if you're keeping up, uh, if you know, the discussion starts uh, on Talkwell somewhere around Thursday and you're checking in Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, you might not be able to check every day, but if you are just keeping up with reading what's been posted, um, then by Sunday most will be posted and definitely if you checked Monday you would be able to read the rest of anything that was posted on Sunday. Um, you would have You would have been able to meet this uh, criterion. The last one here is then to follow appropriate netiquette. Uh, it's always important when we're working in online uh, that we demonstrate good digital citizenship. And part of that is to be civil towards each other in a discussion. So uh, we encourage people to um, debate ideas, but um, that doesn't have to uh, turn into something that uh, maybe offend someone. So just uh, be sensitive to uh, what you're saying. Uh, good, another good reason to compose in Word first before posting somewhere is to let you just get one more look at it to make sure that what you said um, is challenging maybe ideas um, and, and maybe uh, providing an alternative explanation uh, rather than um, taking a shot at, at the person presenting the ideas. And uh, three more points here quickly. Um, there is a three post minimum. So I, I really don't want to quantify this. Um, I think there's a possibility that you may post five or six times. Uh, but more posts doesn't necessarily mean more points. Um, I think as long as posts are short, uh, everyone uh, is is happy with a, a, a big discussion board um, or in this case a talk wheel uh, but when posts are really long and uh, not not well thought out then uh, it can it can get old so three posts minimum if you for some reason don't meet that then it's it, it's a zero so if you just decided uh, I'm gonna post on Thursday and then the next time you look at the discussion board is sometime the next week. Um, you would not get credit for that uh, discussion, that talk will discussion. So keep that in mind. Pretty easy to meet that. Um, and you do want to try to avoid spelling typing errors, grammar errors. Um, you know, you can probably see already from my writing that I've made mistakes. Uh, but but we want to have it as clean as, as possible um, so that um, it, it helps other people to be able to read uh, what we're writing. And then um, finally, uh, it, will, it will help our discussion if you post ahead of the deadline. So where possible, if you can extend it out a little bit, um, that'll uh, make it better. And, and by that, I mean if, if everybody posts um, by midnight on Thursday, so the first post is at 11 o'clock, and then we just have a flurry of posts till midnight on Thursday, and then again on Sunday night we have a, just a flurry of posts, and then everybody's done. 
we we really haven't had a discussion so in this asynchronous for format where we're we're not in real time it's much better if if people can post well ahead of the deadline uh, the next is the technology enhanced learning activity I would like to go over this one uh, separately uh, we'll have just a separate screencast or uh, maybe even a live um, webinar over this topic uh, so I'm not really going to cover it here but just be thinking read through this and be thinking about uh, an activity that you might share with us and then the um, fourth uh, one listed here is the uh, uh, course e-text reading and that one again is one I'm going to go through separately uh, you should be the first uh, readings for the book uh, are going to take place during the second week and so I'm going to provide a little bit more on this topic but the, the key is that we're reading uh, from an e-text you're, you're, you're going to um, get the book from Amazon and it's a Kindle format of the book you don't actually have to have a Kindle to do this if you have your computer or a smartphone uh, or an iPad uh, those are all places where you could read it and if you have more than one of those um, it allows you to read the book in different places so I will go through this one again as well you can see the the grading is is fairly basic we're doing straight points so whatever the total points you score out of the total points possible there'll be a percentage and that will be your grade um, there you can see the text uh, again emphasizing that it's an ebook it's you're not getting the physical book and the the way that'll end up playing out is you'll have to have the ebook in order to to make online notes uh, so make sure you do that um, privacy I sometimes share what I'm doing in my course with other professors since uh, instructional technology is my discipline if you have a disability that um, may impact your performance in this class uh, please let me know and we can make accommodations for you. We want to make sure everyone uh, has a um, fair and equal chance uh, in this course uh, to do the work. So um, that said, uh, I hope uh, that you have a great course and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.